We have time for just a few more questions. Uh, at the, uh, Brian, Tana. Yes. Would you, can you um, come up and use the microphone? Sure. Sure. I'm going to ask people to come on up so that everybody can hear this. Thank you for an insightful evening. Content is king, but devices count as well. And I'd like to hear more about your perspective on the technology that does, is delivering content, specifically film. I saw novelist James Patterson on the Today Show this morning introducing his new book shorts concept, novels less than 100 pages, even thinner than his normal novels. <laughs> it goes to the shortening attention span of the media audience across all mediums um, currently. So how does the changing landscape of devices that deliver films and the way people absorb the content how, if, if in any way, is that changing the way you look at putting packages together and financing them? I'll, I'll jump real quick. Uh, I, I have a lot of thoughts on that issue. One is I'm, I'm, I'm producing a couple films right now, and, and several of them I'm like, man, I wish this was an episodic thing and I could watch it in six minute segments, I'd be less bored. Um, <laughs> and and so, I, so I totally agree with the sentiment, Brian, that, that tension spans are shortening. Um, the flip side is there's also this huge trend towards episodic content, and, uh, and so people are less likely to sit down for three hours of Braveheart today, in fact I haven't seen a three hour movie come out in a long time, um, but, but uh, you know, I'm going to mow through Vikings on Amazon Prime, um, because, you know, and, and frankly I'll probably watch three of them tonight, so I'll get close to the three hours. But, uh, uh, so I think people, uh, there's a great spiel that uh, Kevin Spacey gave um, uh, on House of Cards and sort of saying, what people want is they want stories and, they, and, and some stories call for really, really long character arcs and some stories call for, for shorter ones. Uh, I think what's really exciting about digital distribution is the time frame is we're not married to 23 minutes or 43 minutes or something. We can make it whatever makes sense for that story and, and then let the consumer consume that story as they want. Um, so on one hand, I think shorter segments are, are absolutely a trend, and, and I would love to see more and more projects that want to live on their own white label website, and that's where you go consume it, and, and, and a segment could be six minutes or 12 minutes or 15 minutes. There's, there's a study that like a kid can sit for 17 minutes before he's going to eat the marshmallow in front of him. No matter what. Um, and it's, but whatever the right number is, uh, I think, but the flip side is they also like long arcs. And they, and they like the stories to keep going. And so there is a huge demand for episodic content that you can consume in six minute, minute segments, but it's gonna go on forever. And um, I think balancing those two is a phenomenal opportunity. I think the other thing that's really exciting, Brian, is uh, uh, the ability to sort of pick your own adventure, the ability to, to, to maybe you can articulate stories that are told in different ways and, and, and give interaction to the, to, the, to the watcher of the story and let them make choices. And I've seen people try to try to figure that out. I think there's a lot of, we, we have a lot to learn and how to do that, but 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 that can be done and that'll be great. Um, but ultimately it comes down to what is the best way to tell your story. And 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 some stories are gonna make sense in 90 minutes, some stories are gonna make sense in six minutes, and some stories are gonna need 50 hours and five seasons of, of an hour-long drama. And, and I think that that's just an exciting thing to a storyteller because no matter what the right length for what you're trying to do is, um, there's an opportunity to do it. I can I answer? Sure. <laughs> I'm, sorry, I'm sorry. I just didn't know if we had time or not. Um, I uh, I I think it's I think it's I think it's super interesting um, to Ted's point uh, in in kind of navigating this digital distribution is that I don't think we really know yet. I mean, technology is changing so fast that choose your own adventure or pioneer a new way of doing it is, is literally at your fingertips. You know, I think something that's really interesting, um, I was having this conversation with a friend of mine who's starting kind of a virtual reality company um, and developing virtual reality content here in Chicago, which makes me terribly nauseous, but it's great for some people. Um, and, and the confines of storytelling, like you can't tell a, a three act, 90 minute story in virtual reality everyone will get sick but also so all of the confines of storytelling that we're saying are gonna are gonna break apart and they're gonna change um, and I think that's I think that's super super exciting I have a friend in LA who got um, 
think it was Adobe or uh, a, a, some big brand to finance this episodic series and every five minutes you get to choose which character you want to follow. So it's like, do you want to follow this person's story or do you want to follow this person's story? Which, what does that mean? That means you're likely going to come back and rewatch it and keep figuring out who's watching different stories, which is brilliant because that means returning views, that means returning impressions. So I think it's really interesting and I think in the next five years it's going to change a lot. Um, and you know, I think you have to do your own research and, and to keep up with it and see how the story you have can fit into wherever it's going. I, I would just add to Angie's point, uh, the idea kind of went off, but I think that cross-pollinating the two is really exciting. And, and I think uh, I get really excited when people pitch me a web series that has a narrative feature that goes along with it. That then there's a web series or a Twitter handle that lives on forever. And, it's like uh, a different type of franchise. I, and on one hand, as somebody who would be a fan of that story, I love the fact that it can live in different worlds and, and it makes it more real and whole to me. Um, uh, an example of Dark Knight, which had a you know, huge marketing budget. They created a website called GothamCityPizza.com, so anywhere in the United States of America, you could go to GothamCityPizza.com and they deliver a pizza to you, and that was just so you could feel like you lived in Gotham City. Um, uh, I think that that's a really cheap and, 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 and frankly, elementary venture into the idea of making your, your story more inclusive to the audience. Um, but I think the more uh, uh, formats and environments that your story can live in, um, a is better for the audience, but B, it's also better for commercial viability. So to, to Bobby's point, one of the growing piece of the pie of how you finance your content is product integration, and, um, and, and that's an extremely real thing too. Uh, when I no longer have to watch your TV live on, on CNN, I no longer have to watch your commercial. So now everybody who bought all those commercials has to figure out a way for me to see their products. And uh, maybe it doesn't make sense in our film, but maybe there's a way for our Twitter handle to talk about it, or maybe there's a way for our web series to talk about that product. And so the more avenues, the more uh, uh, formats that your media property can live in, the more opportunities you have to monetize it. I, I, I agree with everything that's been said. I mean, what I would tell you is that when I grew up, I would go play ball outside as a kid, and when the lights came down, I had to come back in. Now it's kids are playing video games, they're watching content on whatever type of screen, iPad, iPhone, whatever it is, uh, whether the parents are at dinner, whatever, it's almost like, you know, like you, you just, just stick it in front of your kid, and that's what it is. If you look at some of these bigger companies that are in Hollywood that used to be very creative in nature, they're actually data people, now, right? And they're looking at, well, how do we sit there and go take certain formats that are working in certain, uh, in, with the kids that are this age, uh, and what are they going to be watching in seven years, and how do we program them to watch that in seven years, because these marketers or advertisers are going to be wanting to pay that type of money in that amount of time. That's the kind of crap that's going on in Hollywood right now. Uh, and it's pretty crazy, because it was, it's, it's changed a lot since I was there. And I was actually just talking with a buddy of mine named Zach Penn, who I did a movie with, who wrote pretty much every major Marvel movie, all the X-Men movies, all the deal, uh, and I produced the movie for him uh, the other day, and he writes a lot of these video games. And to your guy's point, he says, you can kind of choose what character and you can move this way and kind of do that. And he says, that's where it's going with all these different types of programming now, is they're figuring out different ways, because each different avenue you can go down with this character or that character is a different type of marketer, is a different type of ad revenue. And so you have to be thinking outside the box in order to sit there and be successful these days. The days where I started where, well, I have my model and that I'm a dinosaur. And I'm not that young. I'm not that old. I mean, so it's like that if you either you adapt or you, or you die. But I, I think these guys' point is the opportunities are endless and they're gonna make they're gonna continue to be endless. And you have to be creative and think outside the box and understand the structures that are available. And to add on really fast, uh, I would just say that w to what we, the point we were talking about earlier, where you all have, you know, six inch screens in your hand, and you can choose to watch anything that you want. So how am I going to reach you? Marketing in these digital distributions is so and so important. And that's to Ted's point at the very beginning, why a Kickstarter may be a good idea is less about money and more about reaching an audience. Um, because all of you can choose between thousands and millions of videos online. 
but I need to know how I'm going to get to you. And, and that's part of the fun of it too, is building that, that, that marketing structure.